thing. There, no, there are no fully accessible toilets known as changing places in many large towns or cities. This type of facility is needed by more than a quarter of a million people with disabilities. They're larger than standard accessible toilets and used by people with severe disabilities, including children and adults with muscle wasting conditions, cerebral palsy, motor neurone disease and multiple sclerosis. The Changing Places Consortium is leading a campaign to increase their number. It wants legislation to make the toilets mandatory for new large public buildings and for every town to have a facility. Uh, joining me on the line first of all on this, Claire Lucas from Muscular District UK, who's the co-chair of the Changing Places Consortium. Hello Claire. Good morning. Okay, so why do so few towns and big public spaces have Changing Places toilets? Um, people install Changing Places toilets because they are needed by over a quarter of a million people in the UK. These facilities are vital so that people are able to go out with their families, enjoy days out with friends and also just get around, you know, be able to make a train journey and know that there's a toilet that meets their needs. But there are very few of them. So why is that? The reason there are so few is the legislation, for one thing, as you mentioned. It's not strong enough at the moment. It's only a recommendation that large public buildings provide these facilities. Another key issue is a lack of awareness. People feel that accessible toilets are appropriate, but actually they fail to meet the needs of so many people and put people in awful situations where they're faced with being changed on toilet floors, the backs of cars, or are even facing giving surgery to try and make sure that they don't need to plan around toilets. Really? That's, that's quite an extreme solution to, to this problem, which should be sortable, shouldn't it? Um, what sort of equipment yeah. is, is in a change-in-place toilet? Describe what it's like. So the difference between a standard accessible toilet and a changing places is that a changing places toilet is larger. So they tend to be 12 metres squared in size or larger. Uh, they also provide additional equipment. So they have a height adjustable adult size changing bench and they also have a hoist to help people transfer from the toilet to a wheelchair or to the bench. I would imagine maybe some of the objections for not putting them in would be space availability and cost. Yeah, those are the top three that we tend to hear. OK, um, so how, how do you get past that? How do you persuade people that actually it's money worth spending for comparatively few people, but of course for them it's seriously important? I think a key thing is personal stories. So I think when people are confronted with the actual realities that people are having to face without these toilets available, they find it very hard to argue against installing them. But I think a crucial thing is that we get this legislation changed so that there's actually the mandatory backing behind campaigners so that they can show that these toilets are recognised as a vital resource. Claire, thank you. Claire Lucas from Muscular Dystrophy UK, co-chair of the Changing Places Consortium. With me in the studio, Samantha Buck from Horsham and your son Alfie needs this kind of facility, doesn't he? He absolutely does, yes. Um, he's 12 now. He's um, five feet tall, just a little bit shorter than me. Um, he has quadriplegic cerebral palsy and um, his uh, movements are very strong and can be dangerous when you manually handle him. Uh, when we go out, it's a bit different to when he was a bit younger. Yeah, um, I met him, what, maybe four, four, five years ago? It was, I yes. believe he's 12 now. It was five years ago, yeah. Was it five years ago? So he's, he's, he's grown substantially. Kind of doubled the size now. Right. He's as tall as me. Yeah. Um, and when, when there is no change in place or a hoist, ultimately, um, to get help me get him out of his wheelchair, I am dragging him out of the wheelchair and laying him on a toilet floor is the reality uh, where um, he is changed um, because I can't hold him upright. He has no body um, strength. bodily strength. Yes. Yeah, he can't hold his own body weight up. Or, and so that's up to someone else or something else to do that for okay. him. OK, Let, let's just all stop and picture this because we've all taken our children out for, for days out and you go to public lavatories and just think for a moment what it's like to lie your child down on the floor of one of those public lavatories even if it's the one of the accessible toilets they can still be pretty rank can't they they can especially depending on the time of year and who's been in there before you you know if it's the winter it will be covered in mud obviously and you get um splash mm. from the previous people um uh, because uh, disabled toilets are generally for everybody it's not just women's or men's yeah it's it's for everybody which is is good it's a good thing um but when you 
it, it, he takes up the entire length of the disa- a standard disabled toilet. Mm-hmm. Um, so his wheelchair is outside. Um, so I have to, I can't do anything by myself. I can't be a single carer out with him. I have to have someone out to help me to pass uh, a pads, uh, you know, nappies, and wipe through the door, an open door, for other people to see what's going on inside the loo. That's not very dignified no, for him, not, is it? No, it's not, yeah. That's terrible. Um, so how much does this restrict your ability to take Alfie and the rest of your family for days out or shopping trips or whatever it is? Uh, it's it's military operation or we don't go. Um, it's 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 got... We're getting to that stage. And as the previous lady, Claire, said about when you get older, some people actually opt for surgery so that you don't need to use a public toilet when you're out. So if you're catheterised or something like that, where you don't need to be. Yes. Um, And for someone with complex physical disabilities like my son, that's not an option because everything gets infected. And when you're laid down on a public toilet floor where there are literally... Excuse me, wincing, I'm sorry. uh, It's it's just awful. There are millions of germs and there literally are millions of germs on the floor and he's already at high risk of being in hospital throughout the year with general chest infections and everything else and this would get inside um, an open wound or, 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 or whatever if you've decided to opt the surgery route that's not on my agenda no. but um it will stop us from going out and and not just alfie the entire family because we travel in num- numbers he's he's um without independent mobility so every everywhere we go he has to take a team with him yeah. whether that's mum and dad or mum and carers or the family his brother and sister mm-hmm. uh, to help for the entire day so we travel in numbers so wherever we go um we, we need to take a team and uh, same as uh, like when you go to towns or for the day out or whatever, just just shopping, just right. shopping. So what, what's the picture? Where can you go and know that there's a, a changing places toilet, Samantha? And I wonder how much this has changed in the five years since we first met. Yes, uh, in the in the last five years, there has been small changes, and they're brilliant, like big days out, um, like going to uh, some theme parks. They've put changing place toilets in, but of course, with that, uh, Alfie can't get out of his wheelchair because he can't hold himself up, so he's not actually allowed on any of the rides. So he doesn't he gets to go to the theme park, but he doesn't get to have a lot of the the fun yeah. that everybody else has. Yeah, he gets to watch them have all the fun, but we get to use a changing place toilets. That's the small bonus, but. Literally, that, he that's not much of one, fun. is it? Really, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, um, and also. Um, the good thing is, is leisure centres, especially because they're generally council run, uh, they and they're big. Are they being retrofitted to yes. leisure centres, or if if uh, if there's a new build leisure centre somewhere these days, would they, as standard, put a, a changing places toilet in, or do you have to bang on their doors in the planning phase? That's exactly it. That's what's that's what's happening. It's not as standard, um, which is why we want the law changed, uh, the uh, building regulations part M. It doesn't state in there that any new build over a certain square foot should compulsory it should be compulsory that they have a change in places built into uh, the plan so it's trying to catch them while they're designing these things yes um, otherwise it literally is down to the uh, parents or the carers um, campaigning locally and literally banging on the door and saying don't forget us you need to get this done or the week we can't come where can you go locally from Horsham can you go into Horsham is there a changing places in Horsham well there isn't in the town but uh, they're redeveloping in two parts um, in the town um, which means that we're going to be having two Wow. Yes. we're going to, uh, There's an indoor part of Horsham uh, called Swan Walk Shopping Centre, uh, but that shuts at six. Um, so, And that's fabulous. They're mm-hmm. putting one in there. Uh, but obviously, if we go out for walk into town in the summer um, and have a family meal for someone's birthday, which generally we do, there's we can't access the toilet for Alfie's because it's all locked because yes. it's on the inside. So they're, they're putting another one in the outside development that they're doing. So we'll have them in both places. It is. Have you brought pressure to bear there is that are you partly responsible for that uh yeah because it, it started when five years ago when i started my um uh, I, I posted a picture of alfie laying on a toilet floor yeah. um which kind of shocked people because they 
because you don't know they you don't know unless you're living that world mm. uh, you don't you don't know that that's what you have to do after the age of five there is nothing for you you get a disabled key disabled key i mean a, a, a radar key yes. sorry for disabled toilet access is what i meant to say um and when you're five um but you open the door and there's literally a toilet in there in a slightly larger mm. cubicle yeah. if you like but there's nothing else to help me. And especially when he's at 12 and he's five feet yes. tall and, you know, he's, he's, he's face I, to face with you. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, so so that is good. Uh, just just I, want, I have one question. So you do have a radar key for all these changing places toilets. So not everybody can use them. So they stay cleaner and they're not going to be vandalised. Well, uh, there you can actually buy radar keys off the Internet, even on Amazon, which is not good. Um, you sh- it should be um, you get them from the, your council that, um, or if you're like a blue badge, there's an application process yes, for a blue badge, but then they're abused as well, be. aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, uh, because they get they get lent to people to use. Got it. If people have got the time or, or the kind of thought process to to go into a changing places toilet and, yeah. and disrupt things, then they really need to have some yeah. help, don't they? Okay, so you, you're fighting the fight, and uh, there there are going to be more of them. There um, are, yes. Is it can, when you're planning your days out? Is there a website where you can go and it tells you all the places where they are? Yes, the Changing Places campaign has a map, um, so uh, you can go on to the Changing Places website um, and they have a map. So, so you can see where they are. Yes, but not. But it's not. It's it's good in principle, but actually. There are many which are not registered. Um, the the people that have put them in have not registered okay. them. Uh, so for for the user, uh, that's the for the carers of the people that are disabled or the disabled people themselves. It's not it's not really very. It's good. a little bit of potluck. I it, mean, it, there's 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 the the Brighton Hire Bike Scheme yes. knows where every one of its bicycles is at any time of day or night. And they move around. Yes. Yet toilets like these ones don't move around, yes. but we don't know where they all are. A stationary building and then, then it's not registered. That's exactly okay. it. So it's very hard, <laughs> which is why we end up using social media, asking people. It's still word of mouth, which, um, you know, get, gets the job done. Keep doing what you're doing, I guess. I will. Thank I won't you. be giving up. I hope you have a good summer with, with the family. Thank you. I will try my best. Thanks. Samantha Buck from Horsham. Uh, your response to what you've heard there, changing places, toilets. Uh, is that something that you have a need for? And just where are they? And, and how many more do we need so that make, can make life easy for the people who need to use them? Uh, you get in touch. You can text me 81333. Start your message with radio. BBC Sussex Drive Time.